Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. This is a video for special assignment number four. The topic is food photography. If you're like me, you've been sitting inside most days for the past two months, and one of the things that makes your day go by a little bit faster is knowing that there's three meals, there's snacks, and there's beverages along the way, and that keeps things interesting. So what I want you to do now is photograph it. Now you're going to know from being in G class briefly, there's no written instructions this time, so you have to watch through the entire video. I want you to pay close attention to the things that I'm going to introduce to you and what I'm going to be looking for in terms of what you submit. If you have any questions, then go and email me at this email address, it's my usual GAPS email, or leave me a private comment in this assignment and I will help you out as best I can. Alright, so let's get started. There's a website we've used in class, it's called 500px.com. I'm going to go there right now and I want to show you some of the work that people have put up in terms of food photography. So when you go to 500px, click on Discover and then go to Categories and select Food. And you're going to see something like this, lots of examples of really well done food photography. Now, I've picked out four of these that I think are kind of interesting and will illustrate what I'm looking for, so let's take a look. First one here, you can see, is a picture of the ingredients that are going to go into a dish. Notice that they're laid out really, really carefully. Someone has put some thought into this. Even in the background, there's a little bit of the ingredients. Uh, in fact, the background itself is kind of a really interesting wooden bench of sorts which has a lot of character, a lot of interesting texture. Uh, why does it have that texture that you can see? Well, I would guess it's because the light that it's in is revealing that. If you think about where the light is coming from, I would guess it's coming from just up above the screen. It's probably a window there. It's soft light, it's not harsh sunlight blaring in. And all of this again has been carefully planned out. Look at the soft shadows cast by the eggs here giving a sense of space and form. And also notice how the light is soft, but not so soft that there's no texture. You can imagine the texture on the eggs here, or on the plate itself, or in the thyme, which is right over here. This is a really cool photo, which has a lot going on, and had a lot of planning that went into it. Let's take a look at another one. This one is a finished dish, and it's also shot from straight overhead. So that's an unusual perspective. We don't normally look at our food from straight overhead, so it's got that going for it. There's strong lines in the background which lead you up and down the frame, and there's even the chopsticks which kind of lead you onto the bowl, and then the edge of the bowl, which is highlighted here, keeps things interesting and brings you around. And then even the way the vegetables are set up in it, they carry you through the frame with curved lines. So really good use of lines here, interesting background. Again, the odd item that's been placed in the background in what we call the negative space, just to break things up, break up the symmetry, keep things interesting. Also down here, really nice photo that makes me hungry. Moving on, I'm going to move myself to the side here. This photo here is not really ingredients, it's not really a finished dish, it's what I would call something creative and also kind of technical. How did the photographer get this photo to work? Of course, you have to drop something into the glass, but you have to shoot at the right moment. Without specialized equipment, here's what you're going to need to do. Pre-focus your camera on one of the glasses by holding down your finger on the screen and keeping it there until the camera locks focus. That way it'll be ready to shoot when you press the button. Have someone else drop the object into the glass and while the drop is in progress, hold down the shutter button so that your camera goes into rapid fire mode and hopefully one of the photos it captures will be at the right moment with a big splash. Notice the background is dark, so you're going to have to clear out whatever's in the background in your house, maybe hold up something black like a sheet or even a towel or a piece of Bristol board you might have. And finally, the lighting here is harsh, not like the other two photos. It's, uh, it's definitely sharper lighting, stronger lighting, which is designed to capture all of these little droplets. And if you do it just right, you'll get something dramatic like this. The last photo I want to show you is just a fun photo that caught my eye. It reminded me of being a kid. I can totally imagine kids wanting to devour fruits or vegetables with something like this. The colors are fun. 
The shapes are fun, it's creative, it tells a story. And notice that the lighting again is soft. You can see the shadows here of the blueberries and here of the oranges, so the light must be coming down from the camera's upper right. And uh, there's no harsh glare anywhere, even though this is probably a reflective plate and the oranges, of course, are reflective, so the photographer has controlled lighting very, very well. As you go through making your photos, keep in mind the following. Do you remember these? The Elements of Art, a PDF that I gave you early on in the semester, and the Principles of Design. I'm going to attach that to this assignment so you have it uh, at, your, at your disposal for reference. But a few things I want you to focus on. Under Color, you're going to see Light. That's key to this assignment, and so is space, the use of space and how you lay things out. When you're laying them out, think about balance, emphasis, and proportion as well. Because if you get things just right, you can turn a kind of plain photo into something that really gets people thinking, in this case of food, maybe make them hungry. That's the idea here. In terms of marking, here's what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, I'm not marking this yet. At the moment, it's formative, but it will become summative, so pay attention here. Think about the possible subjects, which we've already talked about, but this is important, the key goals. How you compose your photo, what you put in there and where, and how you arrange things, very important. The lighting should be thought of in advance so that it accomplishes a goal, whether that's revealing texture or form, or it's highlighting splashes like in that example that I showed you where the strawberry fell into the glass. Think carefully about what kind of light you're going to use. Think about the space and how you put things down. If it's on a plate, where are they going to go? What's going to go on the countertop where the plate is sitting? And so on. Make sure there's no distracting backgrounds. Uh, when you take your photo, make sure it is sharp and clear. Check before you move on. If there's blurriness in the image and a part that should be sharp, reshoot. And finally, think carefully about keeping things balanced and how you're emphasizing the ingredients for the different parts of the dish. As always, be sure to shoot lots. So the way we're going to do that is by shooting throughout the day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Take several days to do this, different meals on different days. Try to get a minimum of 10 completely different compositions, lots of variety. Edit them to improve their appearance, and then save as high-quality JPEGs. 1 to 3 meg file sizes is good. Most of you are doing this. Keep the pixel count to at least 1,000 by 1,000. I've noticed a few photos that are coming in really, really small, and it's going to be hard to display them, but I'll do my best. Finally, Attach your top three images to this assignment. I'm looking for variety, not the same thing each time. Of course, as always, rename your files in the usual method. And finally, give me a two-paragraph private comment in G class addressing how you did and how you did not reach the key goals, which are up here. In other words, what went well, what didn't go so well. And if you want, you can tell me a little bit about what you would do differently next time. Anyway, that's it for now. I miss you guys. I look forward to seeing you at some point in the future. I hope you're doing well. That's it for now. Stay safe and enjoy the assignment. Looking forward to seeing your work. Bye for now.